Hello viewers, today we are going to discuss the techniques of differentiation and our very first very important rule that is the chain rule is our focus. The chain rule is a rule of finding derivative of functions which are composition of two or more functions. Let us take a short visit back to the understanding and the idea of composition of functions before we get down to the chain rule. Composition of functions can be very well understood if we look at a pair of function machines. Here we have a function machine G whose input is a ball, a sphere and the output results in a cube. This output when dumped into the function f results in an output of a faceted ball. Together they can be expressed as a big function machine where a ball is dropped in and it results in an output of a faceted ball. In mathematical terms what does that mean? If I take x to be the input of g, it results in u as an in output of g same as g of x. This goes in the function machine f and results in an output f of u. Together as I look at this as the composition, it would mean same as saying that x is the input and what is the output represented as f of g of x. That is exactly what we mean by composition of two functions. The chain rule is a rule of finding the derivatives of composition of two or more functions. Here is the rule without proof for you to follow and understand. If f is a composition of two differentiable functions f and g that is f of x is same as note the difference that is a capital F is same as f of g of x then capital F is differentiable and its derivative is product of the derivative of g and the derivative of f at g of x. So, it is same as f dash of g x into g dash x. Sounds confusing. Let us take another look at the same definition restated. Suppose capital F is the composition of small f and g and let us call u to be g of x. Try to relate it to the picture that you had seen just a minute earlier then f of x is f of u, right? So, the chain rule says that derivative of f with respect to x is same as derivative of small f with respect to u because now small f is a function of u. The output of g goes into f into the derivative of u with respect to x. So, there is a chain of continuation, there is a chain that you can see going from f to u then u to x. So, you differentiate small f with respect to u, multiply it with the derivative of u with respect to x. That is what the chain rule of differentiation says. This get extended to 3 or more functions and we have a rule which says that if capital F is a function which is composed of f, g and h in that order and if v is g of u where u is h of x. So, you kind of come through the layers and you say h of x is u and then the outer layer v which will be g of u such that the function capital F becomes f of v then what will be the derivative of capital F with respect to x? As I said use chain rule, extend chain rule. What does it give us? Derivative of F with respect to V 
deri into the derivative of v with respect to u because v is a function of u into derivative of u with respect to x. This chain can be continued depending on the number of functions that are involved in the composition. Now, there is nothing that can replace actual application of the chain rule to get the hang of this rule. So, let us get down to applying this to our very first function. The question says differentiate sin of root x with respect to x. Notice that this is definitely a composition of two functions, sin function and the square root function. So, to find the derivative, we definitely need the chain rule. So, our function, let us call it capital F, is sin of root x and let us take the inner function, inner as in this case the second function root x to be u, then f of x is nothing but sin of u and therefore, by chain rule d f by d x is same as the derivative of f with respect to u into the derivative of u with respect to x. That is same as cos of u because derivative of sin u with respect to u is cos of u into derivative of u which is derivative of root x is same as 1 by 2 root x replace u with root x and your answer is ready. Let us take a question where we have a little more complex composition. Here the question is if y is equal to x plus root of x square plus a square raised to the power n, show that dy by dx is n times y by under root of x square plus a square. If you see the function y here, do you observe that there is composition involved? And not only composition, there is a sum of two functions as well, that is x plus under root of x square plus a square. This sum is raised to the power n. So, there is definitely more layers involved in this function. Let us see what we will do as we start the derivative. Let us take the inner function that is the function which is the base to be u. So, let u be x plus root of x square plus a square. So, clearly y is equal to u to the power n and therefore, by chain rule the derivative of y can be read as derivative of y with respect to u into derivative of u with respect to x. Now, derivative of y with respect to u is nothing but n u to the power n minus 1. It is the derivative of u that needs more work. So, again going back to our function u, which is of course, x plus root x square plus a square, it all simplifies that is the derivative of y with respect to u simplifies to be this expression. Let us focus on u. u is x plus root of x square plus a square. It is just not sum of two functions. The second part of this function is again composition. So, let us just take that to be z. So, if z is root of x square plus a square, then the base function that is x square plus a square can be taken as w and therefore, z becomes root of w. Are we ready then to find what dz by dx is going to be? So, dz by dx that is the derivative of z with respect to x is nothing but derivative of z with respect to w into derivative of w with respect to x and that is nothing but 1 by 2 root w into 2 x put back the value of w and you have the derivative of z with respect to x. So, our u which was nothing but x plus z has the derivative ready as 1 plus x by root x square plus a square, which may be again rewritten. But that is not the end of the problem. 
we go back to finding what dy by dx was. So, I already have dy by du and now I have du by dx. Using the chain rule, I have dy by dx written as the product of these two expressions. Notice that the two expressions which are being multiplied have something common. So, if you use the rule that if the base is same powers get added, the expression does simplify to be nothing but n y by root x square plus a square, but because y was x plus root of x square plus a square whole to the power n. So, a more complex, more of a u, v, w and a z coming in sounds confusing and time taking as well. Will this be a practical approach for all the other problems that you come across? Well, may not. So, we need to reinvent our strategy and then use the chain rule. Let us take a problem and see if I can explain to you how to cut short this assumption of u v w. So, we have a question which says find derivative of cos of sin of root of a x plus b. Do you see how many layers are present here? How many functions are composed? First x change to a x plus b, then the square root function comes in, then the sine function comes in and then the cosine. So, obviously, it is very well a case of chain rule. Let us see what we do if I start with y as cos of sin of root of a x plus b. Starting with the outer layer that is of the cosine function, the derivative can be written as minus sin of sin of root of a x plus b into derivative of sin of root of a x plus b. So, if you keep the reference of u as we did earlier, if sin of root of a x plus b was u, then u would have multiplied with the derivative of u with respect to x. So, we are going to cut short, we are not going to bring u and v in this method. Now, what is the next layer? Sin function. So, we differentiate the sin function with respect to root of a x plus b and we get cos of root of a x plus b multiplied with the previous minus sin of sin root a x plus b into the derivative of the next function that is root of a x plus b, which leads us to the next layer which is square root. So, the square root derivative would give us 1 by 2 root a x plus b. Inner function is a simpler one a x plus b, but not an insignificant. If you miss multiplying by a, the derivative is incorrect. And therefore, we have differentiated a function which was composition of four functions without bringing this u v assumption. One more question to form it up for you. Find derivative of cos of x cube into sin square of x to the power 5 with respect to x. What you need to observe in this case is that there is a product involved in the function. So, chain rule is what we are discussing, but we cannot neglect the presence of product and therefore, product rule. Recall this rule which we are going to use just now. Starting with our function called as y, dy by dx by product rule gives us sin square x to the power 5 as it is derivative of cos x cube in plus cos of x cube into derivative of sin square x to the power 5. Now, comes the use of chain rule the moment I differentiate cos of x cube. Starting with the outer layer that is cos, I get the derivative as minus sin of x cube into derivative of x cube. Let us also take a look at the next term also before we complete the first term derivative. Here sin square x to the power 5, the outermost layer is of the square function. So, differentiating I would get 2 times sin of x to the power 5 into the base, the derivative of the base that is derivative of sin of x to the power 5. Completing the differentiation, 
we get sin square of x to the power 5 into negative sin of x cube into derivative of x cube giving us 3 x square. The second term you need to just watch out for derivative of sin of x to the power 5 that is nothing but cos x to the power 5 into 5 x to the power 4 again applying the chain rule. What is left is now just a bit of simplification. If something simplifies cancels good otherwise you do end up with a long expression like this as your final answer. I hope students today's lesson has brought in a lot of clarity as far as the chain rule is concerned. Chain rule is one of the basic rules that will continue to be in use as we explore other techniques of differentiation in our future lessons. See you till then. Thank you.